It was March 18th, Gary's birthday, an observance of a half-century endurance, the 50-year-old reaching a milestone. A birthday celebration was in order but the cardinal day wasn't the 18th of March, but the 17th. Saint Patrick would also have to relinquish an acknowledgement for it was Jan's mother, Helen Murrow's birthday. Gary concurring her seniority should always take precedence, having accepted the Murrow annual family event through the years as reality and opinion of life. His birthday was distinctive, sharing a common bond with his father, both born on March 18th. But a curiosity always lingered, an elevation of kismet. Gary having remembrances of his birthdays during his youthful East Oakland ascendancy, but never recalling a commemorative ceremony for his dad. His day was not without recognition on the 18th, Jan providing a perfunctory birthday cake and gifts to mark the occasion. Gary's receiving acknowledgments for this day, a perfunctory telephone call from California and birthday greeting from Jan's family. With the arrival spring having set forth, found the greening of nature in full bloom, another Kansas winter now a historic chapter. The double corner lot hosting the residence, its capacious area of lawn requiring weekly attention. Gary's 26-inch deck riding snapper lawn mower accorded to him by his father-in-law having seen better days, and was in need of replacement. A decision being made to call upon Denny Callison, a diesel mechanic friend at Kiowa Service Company, the John Deere dealership which inaugurated Gary's first Kansas employment. Denny maintaining a small assembled inventory in his sideline business of refurbishing riding lawn mowers. A telephone call to the mower entrepreneur, Gary finding Denny was about to conclude work on a snapper with a larger 32-inch deck, and was willing to accept Gary's well-worn mower in trade. A complication of transporting the mower presenting a dilemma, not wanting to impose on his father-in-law for use of his pickup. Gary having already made a decision to acquire a trailer for the purpose of cutting and hauling firewood for the coming winter, it would also fulfill his mower transportation agenda. The trailer search beginning, Gary first approached Harold Madsen the owner of Madsen Automotive to have a trailer hitch installed on the 87 Buick. Having noticed on occasion a trailer displayed on Harold's used car lot. Inquiring about them. Harold asserting, because of the farming community, the demand for trailers was always high and adding they were seldom part of his inventory. Gary left with one local option the classified section of the Anthony Republican newspaper, and to his amazement, asserted a one-line ad, for sale, two-wheel trailer, $250 and a phone number. Gary immediately directing a call of inquiry to the local number, an elderly sounding gentleman answering. Gary's first questions after inquiring about its availability was pertaining to its size and condition but instead of any descriptive information about the trailer, the person on the other end of the line began a dissertation and explanation of its prior use in his lawn mowing business. Finally, prodding the talking individual on the other end of the line, being somewhat blunt, Gary asking again about its size adding the word dimensions. The hesitant answer slowly coming back, well I don't know how big it is, but it holds two lawn boys and a snapper. Gary with a smile on his face response was a simple okay, I'll be right over. Asking for the address, just across Main Street on the south side of town. The brief drive fulfilled, introducing himself to an elderly couple as the person who had called about the trailer, the owner continuing where he had left off on the phone about his past lawn service, retirement, and that the trailer was still in fairly good shape, but no longer had a need for it. The trailer was of metal welded frame construction, approximately 8 feet in length and 5 foot wide. 
The flooring was weathered worn three-quarter inch plywood, boxed in with metal rails, all sitting on a frame fastened to a rear axle with 16 inch wheels. It did have two tail lights with frayed wires that resembled those of Gary's traded 1951 Dodge pickup. Gary was satisfied but did question the elderly owner if the price was negotiable, receiving a one-word answer. Nope. With the Buick's hitch ball fitting the coupling. The trailer finding a new home at 602 North Springfield. Another undertaking accomplished.